Good. And we're just about set to go. Battle Creek will kick off. And the kick is away, and it's a good deep kick. And Matt Kopp will take it and give the pitch to Sprinkman coming around the other way. A return left, and it's not going to go very far. Mustang's not too successful on that return. Bearcats smelling it out quickly. Something, Joe, we're going to see all night long, and that is that uh, the Bearcats have one of the premier uh, kickoff people in the league. Uh, I was talking to Coach Knight today. And one of the things he shared with me is about half the time he kicks it right into the end zone. Now he put his big foot into it that time. We'll give you the starting lineups as soon as we uh, see the Mustangs break huddle. Sometimes Coach Knight uh, tends to start seniors on their last home game, but Dan Knight, sophomore, is under center. Marty Williams behind him there, just in your picture. And the turn goes to Williams, and he's got a couple before he's slammed to the turf. 76 is Eugene Roberts on that stop, and he's also the kicker. Yes, he is, and one of the things that we're going to look at, I, I imagine, after this is that uh, the Mustangs will not try a reverse on the kickoff. You catch that ball if it's way down in there, and you get as much ground as you can early, and then worry about breaking it up the field, rather than put yourself in a situation that we've done already. I'm sure Battle Creek watched game films, and they were ready for that kickoff maneuver. Second down and six, Williams got four, and here comes Knight. He'll keep it, and he'll pick up uh, close, close to uh, the first down yardage. Possibly get in it, indeed he does. First down at 10. Don Sherrod in on the stop for Battle Creek. Sherrod really shut him down there, and uh, otherwise I think it would have been a little bit longer of a gain. Danny Knight was moving right out there on the cornerback, had one move, and he was going to get out there where it was going to be pursuit to catch him, and Sherrod make a heck of a play. Sherrod a senior, 6'2", 220 pounds, and something we haven't talked about yet, but uh, the Bearcats match up size-wise quite well with the Mustangs. Boy, they sure do, right? They've got a lot of people. They've got a lot of tall people like the Mustangs do, not just the height-wise. Dan Knight again on the keeper, falls across the 30-yard line before he's tripped up. That's Jeff Madden, number 66, in on the stop. One of the things that Coach Knight talked to me about today was that uh, they need to run a little bit away from that nose guard. Their nose guard at least Port Central Fields is the is the key to the Bearcats defense. They like to run a little bit of that wide veer then tonight, Joe. I think we'll see more than the other uh, inside veer. Here comes Marty Williams again off tackle inside, bouncing forward across the 35 and down close to the 36 before one of the Bolden brothers, that's Mark Bolden, number 41, a junior at 5'6", 165 pounds, makes the stop. We look mostly with the Bearcats uh, in that what we call the 52 defense. Every once in a while they'll slant down one way or the other, but they like to use the nose guard again uh, to stay, uh, that Ernest Jackson to stay right head up, and he reads. He's, he's powerful enough to be able to stop that uh, center charge and be able to read which way the ball's going. Nick Roush, the Mustang center, and Dan Knight will pull the ball and finally pitch outside to Springman, a nice option play. Run to perfection by Knight. Springman across the 40, and... Uh, Close to the 45. Danny Knight's getting better and better at reading that play, Joe. It, uh, it takes me all the way back to 1977 on the club that you played on when uh, Pete Metzler was able to read that just exactly right. He'd run down the field 30 yards before he'd make that pitch sometimes. Oh, uh, you're right. And uh, Shane Springman keeping a good pitch relationship to Dan Knight. So when Knight went to pitch it, Shane was there to catch it. The whole key to that option play. Mustangs in a double tight end formation. One split back to the top of your picture. And Springman gets the call again, slicing inside. He's across the 50 into Bearcat territory. That's a good quickness of Shane Springman. You all of a sudden you run outside one time and then you run that little pop inside. Maybe they noticed that Ernest Jackson was slanting one way or the other and they decided to, uh, to run that little counter play inside and Shane with his speed was able to get by the defensive line and right into the linebackers right away. Referees have called timeout to talk something over. Battle Creek is claiming that Springman fumbled the football. Official's not sure yet. Dan Knight in your picture trying to talk things over. And there's big Doug Roberts, number 77. He's the Mustang tri-captain, a senior, also playing his last home game. I think he's convinced that uh, the Mustangs are going to keep it. Nobody's moving on the Mustang side, and I never saw the ball pop up, but the Bearcats were certainly excited about something. Well, they might have taken it away under the pile. Portage Central is certainly acting like uh, they've got it. It'll be second down uh, 
when play resumes, the officials uh, having themselves quite a conversation. And we'll take a look at our uh, officials for this evening. Our referee is Rod Temmel, Chuck Bell, the umpire, Jeff Hefner, the linesman, Tom Honeysett, the line judge. There you see the names. And Bob Adams is the back judge. Our tonight's officials, Rod Terrell, they tell me, not Temmel, Rod Terrell. Bob Knight in your picture there in the middle on the bottom talking things over with the referee. We never saw a penalty flag, John. I really can't figure out what the delay's been. No, the whole discussion must have been around just exactly what you said, and that was that uh, the Bearcats thought that there was a fumble someplace down in there. Now, well, Porter Central retains possession second and eight from their own 45-yard line. Knight gives to the second man through. That's Springman again, and not much running room. Bolden and Sherrod, the two linebackers, in on the bottom of that pile, making the stop. I think what we saw there is uh, Ernest Jackson just kind of piling things up in the middle. Mustang's trying to run right at him at that point, and, and being able to just kind of stack things up so that the linebackers can get in there and stop the play for very little game. Other starters on that Bearcat defense, Scott Dull, Joe Hawkins, Ernest Jackson, Richard Smith, Eugene Roberts, that's the front line, Carlos Vick, Spencer Tuggle, two of the defensive backs. This time the Mustangs have a slot man at the bottom. That's Stacy Young, and they'll run that way with Springman. He's got the corner, 50, across the 45, and down across the 40 before he is hammered down there by Eugene Roberts, the junior who is also the kicker. Looking at the defensive line of the uh, Bearcats there, Joe, <clears throat> they had the, uh, the defensive line, or the ends on the defense. They played in an up position. They were in up position, they were just a little bit inside the tight end. The tight end was able to hook the defensive end then, and that, would, that was exactly what sprung Shane Springman to the outside. And we saw good evidence of Springman's speed that got him around the corner, even in the soggy field. And once he got near the sideline and picked up a little bit firmer footing, he accelerated again. First and 10, Ported Central, and I think we've got a delay of game penalty against the Mustangs. Ported Central backing up. It was first to 10 on about the 39 of the Bearcats, but uh, that will back them up five. No score here, early going, first quarter, 7-18 to play. Delay of game is the call against the Mustangs on their initial drive of the ball game. Early in the season, Joe, so these little setbacks like this would put the Mustangs in a hole that they never seem to get out of. It's something we want to watch tonight and see if they've matured. Stacy Young remains the lone wideout. Knight again on the option, fumbles the football, but picks it up. Scott Dahl, number 64, caused that fumble. Boy, Scott Dahl made the whole play. He was right in there on the on the dive back. When Danny Knight put the ball in there, he didn't have time to pull it out. There was a hit right there when he was trying to pull it out to, to run the option. The option was there, but with all those collisions and those white shirts right in there, and of course, like we said, Dahl was the was the first one in there that that just messed up the whole play looked like too that uh, perhaps the slippery footing caused Knight to lose his balance and he put his hand out to try and steady himself and drop the ball boy it is a mess out in the middle of the field second down Knight will roll to his right and put the ball in the air for Marty Williams who makes a nice catch over his shoulder and he picks up six or seven before he's hammered to the turf by Mark Walbeck all the way back in a situation now where they're third and about three it, it looks like, well, it's, it's just a perfect situation for the Mustangs. They've got a lot of options off of this situation. When you run the veer like they do, they're just going to have to wait and see maybe what, uh, how the Battle Creek Central lines up and move from there. Dargis is the lone split back at the bottom of your picture. Mustangs in a double tight formation, third down and three. And Marty Williams gets the call and powers his way across the 30. Plenty of first down yardage. Again, Bolden in on the stop. Also, Jeff Madden at 5'8", 155 pounds. Could be an audible situation. When you put both tight ends up there, Dan Knight is able to look over the defense, look again where Ernest Jackson is if he's lining up one side or the other, and then audible to the two backs and dive either way. First and 10, Ported Central inside the Bearcat 30, and we got all kinds of motion. Looked like uh, the Bearcats might have jumped first, and then uh, the Mustangs jumped off sides. Unless the Bearcats broke that line of scrimmage, it's going to be against the Mustangs because the tight, or the tight end uh, released all the way out. And they've got to hold that position even if the other team's jumping. 
it looks like the call you're uh, starting off where you left off last uh, ball game John and uh, correctly calling penalties that'll back them up five the second uh, illegal procedure call against the Mustangs the first one delay of game this one offsides it'll bring up a first and 15 they'll replay the down and the ball will rest on the 31 makes it a little tougher when every time you start off at first and 15 Terry Martin is the tight end at the top of your picture. Stacy Young at the bottom. Mustangs going with a smaller, quicker set of tight ends. And it's Springman and Williams in the backfield behind Knight. Dargis is split up at the top of your picture. And the call goes to Springman, and he's got some running room. Boy, Shane Springman looks better every game. Uh, Coach Knight has just a group of running backs. We haven't seen Kurt Johnson yet tonight. Uh, who has been an excellent running back all through the season. Marty Williams has been real good. Shane's been real good. Kevin Lecter we haven't seen yet. Uh, it's just really nice when you have an arsenal like that. And the guy that made the tackle on that last play, Andre Ridley, who may be the best athlete on the field, at 6'4", 190 pounds, he uh, also is a basketball star for Battle Creek. And he plays wide receiver split end on the offense. Marty Williams on the call this time across the 20 and digging for the 15 before he's wrapped up. Sherrod on the stop. Well, so, far, so far, those first and 15s are, are doing all right. They're still being able to get that, the big play on the first down play once they get through the penalty situation. And then it's just a short yardage situation. Then you give it to the big guy, Marty, and he's able to move it right through. Mustangs continuing to march here on the opening drive of the ball game. First and 10 on the Bearcat 15. And the ball goes inside once more. Mustangs hammering in behind their center, Nick Roush. Springman again, the carrier. And he picks up three or four. Well, you know, Joe, when we see this, uh, uh, all the backs getting three or four, like you say, on every play, and then all of a sudden you pop one for six or seven or eight, you got to give an awful lot of credit to that down line. They're pushing. Battle Creek back enough so that the backs have that little opening to be able to pick their hole. And if you can see on your picture, Bearcats take a wide split as Springman again gets the call and struggles forward down across the five-yard line before he's wrapped up. Larry Armstrong in on the stop, number 23. He's a senior, 5'11", 175 pounds. First and goal now for the Mustangs. Springman picked up 10. He's got that excellent body lean. He's able to, to, anybody that tried to hit him up around his shoulders, he's already leaning, driving his legs, and, and he'll go right through those people. And the Bearcats electing to stay in that wide line split. Creates plenty of holes. The call goes inside and across, and a touchdown Mustangs. Marty Williams, number 35 in your picture there, 6'3", 215, and he's a senior. Boy, Joe, through the whole drive, all the way down the field, there's no way that Battle Creek Center could figure out which back's going to get the ball. It's Marty Williams one way, it's Shane Springman the other way, then they come back with a little bit of a counter. They just use their backs just excellently, and then all of a sudden Danny Knight, early on in the, in the drive, would be able to uh, run the option a little bit and, and get it first down that way. Jim Brayton in to attempt the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And Ported Central for the third week in a row, the third home week in a row, has taken the opening kickoff and marched in for the first score of the ball game. Jimmy Brayton's become much more consistent in his extra points too. Last week he hit all of them right in a row, all the way down. Uh, everything seems to be coming together there too, which really helps. Well, we've seen so many ball games where you have an inconsistent kicker end up uh, just putting you in a hole late in the ball game. Well, he had plenty of chance to practice last week when uh, Port Central rolled up 63 points. Boy, he sure did. And, that, and I'll tell you, this the game practice is so much different than on the field when somebody's just snapping the ball back to you and you're just kicking it with nobody coming at you. So the Mustangs lead it 7 to nothing at the 3.39 mark here in the first quarter. Port Central coming into tonight's ball game has scored 148 points on the season and only given up 48. While the Bearcats on offense have scored 126 points, and they've given up 90. And Jeff Vine, another sidewinder, will do the kicking. Matt Kopp again on his knee, and Vine will kick it down the middle of the field. Lands at the 20 before it's picked up. 
by Larry Armstrong and as he tried to go upfield, his knee hit the ground and that's where they'll down it. Joe, I see another coaching point there by Coach Knight and his whole crew. Uh, all year long, they've kicked the squib. They've done a lot of different things. They've used Bobby Pop to kick, uh, Jeff Vine to kick, but they've squibbed. But they notice that the Bearcats like to put the three people way deep, bring their short people up. And Jeff Vine's just perfect for that. He drops it right in that hole in between.